All right, so for everybody on YouTube, what's up, everybody? Everybody later on on YouTube. Hopefully either the live stream or the whole video, either way. But um, we'll go ahead and go one by one real quick, introduce everybody. We can get into the conversation we came here for. Um, so go ahead and hit, hit it with my boy Kiwi. Go ahead. What's up? Say hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Oh, why? Wait. <laughs> Oh, I don't like that it says watch. Oh, yeah, I got to hear this. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <hold on. laughs> I was living in purgatory there. I'm like, hold up. Can you hear him? Yeah, he just talked a second ago. I can't hear him. See, this might help you out a little bit. I'm realizing that my stream. Oh, 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 I have no sound. Son of a bitch. Okay, there we go. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Again. Maybe the other person who can't hear me. Now, do you hear him all right? Yeah, I hear him. Okay, cool. Oh, I hear him now talking, but I, I didn't hear him say anything like when you said Kiwi talk kind of thing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so. Oh, yeah, I see Casper, the boy over there. Hello. <laughs> this boy's. I've known this man for a little bit. I met him uh, through Twitch, I think, what about. Oh, it's going to be a good bit, right? Yeah, three, four months, maybe longer. Yeah, three or four months. I was just like putting around, and I seen you playing Dead by Daylight, and I was like really interested in it. And uh, definitely, oh shit, Kadachi just subscribed. Subscribe. Thank you, buddy, for the subscription. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was definitely uh, definitely interested in the game because my wife played it all the time. So, and then f seeing somebody that actually like knew how to play the game was really cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm Casper, by the way. Uh, I. Stream, been streaming for a couple months, six months or no, actually, excuse me, it's been eight months now because my, my oh shit, God, I'm getting subscribers. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, my people are reminding me how long I've actually been streaming for because uh, Hunter Girl and Kai just uh, just uh, hit me with the eight mo eight month sub. They're like, uh, this is the number. <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> now you can remember. Um. Oh, we got lag. Oh, I don't know how hello. Much you want me to go into it, but. Yeah, we had a little bit of a spike there. No, you're good. That's good. That's good. And then I got my boy Banana down there. I have known him for two years. He he was there oh, yeah. back when I streamed Fortnite with like no camera, nothing. So zero viewers Ooh, for like two shit. months. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. Back when Fortnite was good. <laughs> yeah. They just dropped the Mandalorian uh, DLC. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about that. I watched, uh, I watched, uh, it was Soups and, uh, Bullseye, Banana, you're aware of them. They, I watched them do the live event that they just had for, uh, for Avengers and everything. So that was pretty cool. I mean, I, I'll watch, but that game just, meh. Compared <laughs> to what it used to be. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. <laughs> he just came out of nowhere and bitch smacked the world. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, boys. So what we are here to talk about today is remakes good bad the ugly um what our own personal feelings on them uh things like that and uh i would like to start off with i guess a good little way to start would be what makes a difference between a remake and a remaster and um uh, you know those, those key features that makes it different in in the eyes of of us as gamers and content creators so i would like to go ahead and start off there uh I, I would personally think, um, at least I think, as far as I'm aware, uh, remake would be something completely like, like, held to like the predecessor as far as like what it was supposed to encompass, and then like just redone graphically and, um, which I mean redone graphically, obviously, but like actually added stuff, take stuff away, just overall make it a better experience, and then like a remaster is just like I think one of the easiest cash grabs of today which we'll get into later but where you kind of just take something and you go uh more pixels and you just throw it on this <laughs> you throw it on steam or whatever and you're like yeah 60 bucks and you're like what <laughs> i can play this game and you know not as pretty for free because i already have it Why would I? <laughs> but yeah have an emulator or something like that <laughs> so caster what do they mean to you my man what, what what's the difference is it about what i said or yeah i mean i Every time I think about it, what's up, Rodimus? Uh, every time I think about the big one, it's Final Fantasy VII. Ah, uh, I knew this would Final come Fantasy into play. VII, I don't have it written yeah. down, but I knew it. 
I, I loved Final Fantasy VII, the original. The, the nostalgia of going to my buddy's house that had the PlayStation, you know, before I could afford a PlayStation. And um, just just sitting around and playing a game and grinding that game out, um, it was so good. And then the, the remaster, well, it would be a remake completely. Um, it it, it kind of it didn't throw me off a little bit because I, I always enjoy when you get a new aspect of a game, um, but it, it just didn't have that same feel. But then then they came out with the the remaster of it. They had the remaster and then a remake of it, or a, yeah, something like that. And it was like the 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 same game, just better pi uh, pixels and everything like that. Mm. It it just felt so so good to play. Like it just reminded me of when I was like fucking ten years old, sitting around like oh. I got a controller in my hand you know <laughs> um one game that really really was one of my favorite games of all time and i still think they need to make a remaster remake re everything keep going with the series is onimusha mm. um that game when i playing the playstation 2 uh was like me growing up in my teenage really really the time that i was coming into gaming and stuff like that um and playing that game was just so great and then they started making them more and more and more and then they got the fourth one wasn't so good but when they came out that remaster i beat that game in like two and a half hours and i was i was completely content spending 40 bucks <laughs> on it. yeah <laughs> yeah sequels so that's another conversation because sequels man they can get they get rough sometimes absolutely what about you banana you got any um you got any insight on uh, remakes remasters you play anything relative uh, to those not really. I usually just play the original and then. Okay. So you're you're, you're like, nah, screw, it. get off my lawn. This is my kind of shit. I play the old shit. <laughs> I don't need extra pixels. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Basically. I'm perfectly content with my 8-bit Mario game. Get that out of my face. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm not really like a graphics guy. I like good graphics, but. It's really just about that. See, I like over the years for me, like I when I first started playing games, like when I got like serious serious, like I was really young, but like some of the old like the more like semi recent things are like Minecraft, which is like the greatest example. It, obviously everybody hears all the time, but like the greatest example of like gameplay versus graphics. So like that oh, really absolutely. proves to me that graphics literally has no like scripture in it. Like it can help, but like the gameplay is one hundred percent like what you come for. And you know, I mean, it has to balance out, though. Yeah, absolutely. It has to have more, better gameplay if it has less graphics. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In the dynamics of, the, I would say the dynamics of the game have to be there too. Yeah, yeah. But um, as I as I grew older, um, I guess I got a little bit of taste of the finer things, so I started to like graphics a little more. Maybe not yeah. like more than gameplay, but like if I can run a game, I'm gonna run it like that. Like if I can, like. Like oh, I, I, like I'm okay with the drop of 20 frames for the ultra versus the high. Sometimes, like it's a lot rarer now that I stream a lot. So like that's that kind of cuts everything in half. But for the most part, like I've learned, I've liked graphics a lot more. So like overall compared to the two. But but yeah. So so remake remaster. Um, that's how we feel on those. Um, my first question that we can get into and kind of just delve deep from there is what makes a good remake and uh for me to start the conversation uh my example which i don't know if you guys are resident evil fans banana casper resident evil i'm a huge resident evil fan yeah you play the old ones yeah i have a, okay. I have a resident or umbrella tattoo symbol right on my Ooh. Oh. <laughs> or my arm spicy <laughs> yeah uh we actually see this is another thing of nostalgia man it's uh when i was a young kid we stayed up all night playing one through three we literally stayed up all the way through all three of them and it's like slept for a day and a half it was crazy <laughs> no that's um, a, it's some of the fondest memories as a gamer man this is nice that you spent with your friends for like hours and hours or you had to go to school in the morning and you're just like mom i swear i'm gonna go to sleep and you just kept playing all night oh, yeah, and then you came absolutely. home from school you passed the fuck out and they're like uh <laughs> fucking drooling on your tech yeah <laughs> fall asleep go like sleep through three days of class wake up out of a coma <laughs> But yeah, I um I remember my father playing games. That's what kind of got me into everything when I was really young. Is a lot of my father's kind of tendencies, and we we grew up playing like Halo and stuff. But before that, uh, I remember him playing like Resident Evil Two, like the original, 
and like things like that. So like I can remember really, really distant, but like I can remember small little things about Resident Evil 2, like the staircase, like the iconic one that you come into right after you enter the RPD. Like I remember these things. And but like coming into my adulthood, you know, they just remastered or remade, remade. They remade Resident Evil 2, which I, I hope you've gotten the chance to play. Cause boy, that game phenomenal. So Amazing in my opinion. I have them. Um, I haven't got to. Pl well, I play a RE1. Gotcha. Uh, and my buddy told me that. So I don't know if you know that the original Resident Evil. Because um, I think I'm a, a little bit older than you guys. I'm I'm 32. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I might. Yeah. 10 years older. on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I played the PlayStation, and then actually, like one of my one of my viewers just say I'm old school. I remember when the or uh, original Nintendo came out, and we got it for Christmas, and I thought it was the best thing ever. Uh, and that just goes back to saying, like, back then it was, dude, the graphics were so great, you know, growing up. It, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more. But um, so Resident Evil re original, I was I remember, like you said, the nostalgia of it was uh, the the dogs or, or like you're walking through the hallway where the lightning flashed and you've seen the spider crawl past. Mm. And uh, yeah, uh, he it was just stuff you remember. But the Resident Evil original was a lot easier than the resident evil for gamecube they mm. actually up made it super hard the one that they remastered for playstation 4 was the one that they they did on gamecube so oh, okay. uh, it was a little bit more difficult playing that game as a gamer now i remember it being a lot harder back then and then playing it now um so i'm waiting to do res because i since i built my pc i'm kind of spoiled i haven't really touched my uh, playstation in a little while um I, I definitely want to play Resident Evil 3, but what threw me off is is they changed, and I don't know if they did the same thing on RE2, but they cha I heard they changed a lot of the story in RE2. Oh boy, we can, oh, all right, I got you, you ready? All right, so, <laughs> <laughs> I played both, and, um, like, right when they released, like, I was there, um, because okay. I'm a big horror fan, obviously, can't tell, you, you know me, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, which actually I have the keys right here from the doors in Resident Evil 2, but, um, there's, oh, yeah, 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 but, um, there's, there's, um, I have, and I'll go into why, but I have, um, a Resident Evil 2 remake on the good side, and I have the RE3 on the bad side. Um, RE2, in my opinion, you have a little bit more, like, nostalgia for it, playing it, so I would like to see you play that, just to see what you okay. think on that. Because I'd probably watch you stream that, just so I can see what you do. Because, like, because for me, like, I remember, like I said, distant memories, so I, but I don't have a complete canvas of, like, what I should remember and what nostalgia really hits hard. So, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, playing it, it was phenomenal. And, like, I watched playthroughs of the older game right before, and, like, I started playing the remake, which but doesn't hit nostalgia, but it kind of gets the idea through what's going on. And um, yeah, like they, stay, you. they stay pretty true um, for the most part to the uh, the original, but they shake it up so people like you, you know, since you're an ancient dinosaur, so people like you can... <laughs> so, people, so people like you can really get that nostalgia. <laughs> I gotta have something. <laughs> <laughs> Banana doesn't uh, have a camera, my, so I can't roast my, him. One of my uh, <laughs> uh, uh, viewers just said, if Casper has him beat by 20, then I got him beat by like 30 each. Ooh. <laughs> 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 That's crazy, man. I love I love how the, like Twitch works. Like, There's so many like older, diverse people. It's crazy. You would expect so like different type of people, you yeah. would expect like a billion 12-year-olds, but <laughs> it's really not <laughs> like that. I mean, obviously, it's majority, but <laughs> it's crazy. But um, but yeah, Resident Evil 2. Um, as far as like once I played through it, I loved it. I would say honestly, if I played the original back when I was younger, like real young, I probably wouldn't remember much of it. But if I played it back then, I would like it even more, and I absolutely love it. So like when you play through it, like I think you're gonna be, whew. and I don't want to spoil anything, but they do take stuff out, they do add stuff here and there. Like I said, they like, keep you know the people that really were hardcore about the old days to kind of like keep it refreshed, you know. It's like when you're walking through a hallway, you're like, oh, the liquor's going to be here. And you walk the corner, it's not there, but the music picked up. So they're like, so they know they're, they're playing on you. Because they're like, oh, he's about to think it's here. And then five minutes oh, later, yeah. they find it randomly. So like that kind of Absolutely. shit happens. But um, which which they, they took out the right amount of stuff. They added stuff. They really optimized how the game worked um, compared to, because personally, like I, I assume you probably like the fixed camera angles, but I have always been an over the shoulder guy. Like I, my, my like most fondest memory of Resident Evil is Resident Evil 4. Like, I absolutely love that game. That's why my alert boxes are all Resident Evil. Like, I love Resident Evil 4, dude. So, like, I over the shoulder is, like, what really sticks to me compared to the fixed yeah. camera angle. So, when they remade it, they made it over the shoulder. 
So I was like, oh, thank God. And I'm playing as Leon, bro. I was I was in heaven. <laughs> See, that's, the thing, that's the thing that kind of threw me off. So, What's up, Hazard? Welcome to this stream. Three is my favorite. Okay, by far. The, the puzzles were great. The, the nemesis it was just that all around that, of course, tyrant uh, nemesis character. You know, mm. he was a great, great adversary. Um, there was a lot of fear factor into that game. Um, and, and I love that game. Uh, so when then I started getting into four, five, and six, and I was like, they changed camera angles. And then we're, we're not even going to talk about seven. Cause, oh, no, boy. Talk about seven. I mean, um, I don't think seven's too, too bad, but like I, I haven't played it personally. It's so different. It's just so yeah. different. Yeah. And I'm an old guy, again. I don't <laughs> like change as much. But four, I played through four. I played through four, I think, on the, play, uh, on the PlayStation 2, and then I think I played it again on the GameCube. Uh, then I played five, and then I played six. Mm -hmm. um, and they were really good. They started at the end of six. They started stretching the storyline a whole lot, you know. Six was um, a shit show, man. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just too much. But four and five, it was really cool. But the the camera angle, camera angles, were were weird to me because I was used to mm. that. Like, oh man, this, then you know, then maybe you and, won't have such a good experience with RE two than I thought. Well, well, the thing is, is is as I got better at gaming. I started realizing, oh, okay, because I played RE, I think RE4 when I was in, might, might have been in high school, a little bit after high school. Mm -hmm. um, so I played RE4 and I was like trying to get used to, I was still a new gamer. Um, but now I feel like play, going back and playing RE4 compared to playing like RE1, 2, and 3, they'll still always have my heart, but it's really hard. It hard it's hard as shit to play 1, 2, and 3 now. Oh, yeah. It just, oh, yeah. just because of the camera angles and stuff like that. <laughs> That's I why I like. Say that. Go ahead. Uh, that said, that's why I liked about the newer thing because it, it felt more smooth, you know, mm -hmm. like overall. Like I know, like the camera angle shift is like hard for people that have the nostalgia, but like it, it was a lot smoother in the overall scheme of things. That's probably why they did it. And it was quality. I mean, you try to wait for a zombie to get close enough in RE one to like lean up and shoot him in the head, you know, and you, you're end up getting attacked or like knifing somebody at the ground. It shit's hard as hard as hell now, and it was. Uh, it was so much better back then because of the fact that that's all we had and we were used to it. Yeah, yeah. Now we're, we're used to, okay, Halo, I can aim and shoot somebody in the face, you know? I want to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And what I was going to talk about, like camera angles. Camera angles with older games to newer games are really big with me because I tried to go back and fire up my Nintendo 64 and play Nightmare Creatures. And holy shit, was it hard to play that game. Uh, I wish they would come out with a newer version of that because of the camera angles and stuff like that. Mm. Kind of yeah so well i i mean yeah i agree with you for the most part it's hard to stay traditional to like what people really liked without like tweaking the mechanics i feel like if they did like fixed camera angles it would it would be the same kind of clunky controls like i don't know how much you can smooth that out take it back yeah it would be horrible i think yeah <laughs> but um but that segues into resident evil 3 which i'm not going to spoil again for you but that mm -hmm. it's the same scenario as re2 but what like what what happened with RE2 remake is they you know they announced it it kind of built up everybody got ready for it and it came out and it was phenomenal and then like literally I think it was eight or nine months chat you can correct me if I'm wrong but I think it was like eight or nine months after they were like RE3 right, is ready y'all ready and we're like whoa <laughs> like hey, you you developed that entire game that quick like which I which yeah. is my you know what I figured was is that they developed it like hand to hand with Resident Evil 2 because it's the same place, you know, like it's still yeah. Raccoon City. So like I assumed that they were just going to build it that Wild way. <laughs> yeah. But once I started playing it, I figured out that they cut a lot of content. Um, they made it like not not like the good kind of cuts like RE2, but like they cut mm -hmm. a lot of heavy stuff out of there that just like just I want to tell you so bad because I feel you're going to react. Yeah, 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 but I, I feel it. <laughs> but like, they just they cut so much shit. And so like. In, in the end of the day, like it wasn't like it wasn't at all what people would expect, and the nostalgia didn't hit right, and it, it was just a rust game. Like I could beat that entire game in two hours, but which I know the original game was similar because it was supposed to be like a DLC, to like RE2. It wasn't supposed to be like a full fledged game. Yeah. But they they completely botched just the third one. They just they just rushed it out, and like all the assets are the same. Like it, it's it's just like it just didn't feel like it felt like you know which we'll talk about in a little bit is like there's like a cash grab. It was just like, oh, we have the assets, the assets, so just throw them together, and here's RE3. So, okay. yeah, and I heard that the same thing about that too because of the fact that um, they, I, I feel like they were focusing on a lot of that multiplayer game that is RE3, and a lot of my friends said that that multiplayer game was cool, 
uh, and they said that the quality of that game was better than RE3, like the actual story mode of RE3, but there was a lot of bugs in it, which is... Yeah, it, it's, that goes it, into that rush portion. It just wasn't... Like, they literally please, tacked it on just to be like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, we didn't finish the campaign, so here's, you know, some extra multiplayer. Yeah, they're trying to multiplayer. Please, the, please the masses by coming out with something that supposedly would would rival Dead by Daylight, you know? And then the worst part is, is they decided that, for some odd reason, that they can sell that game for 60 bucks. They sold Resident yeah. Evil 3 Remake for 60 which I would pay 150 for Resident Evil 2. But Re Resident Evil 3 Remake, I I wish I could take it back. It did pay like 10 bucks. <laughs> Because, like, it was not, it's not worth 60, and it's just kind of a kick in the balls for you to be like, yeah, it's like one quarter of the game, but same price. It's like, and that that's like right. one of the segues in this in a scenario of, like, just a cash grab, which is, like, what I think, um, it really depends at the end of the day when it comes down to the developers and, like, the, the publishers on whether or not a game is just, like, a cash grab kind of remaster thing, mm -hmm. or, like, actually a passion project to be like, this is what it used to be. Let's stay traditional and let's just make people love it again. And, you know, when a lot of the remasters, um, I feel like are pretty bad when it comes to that kind of scenario. Um, just like a just like a brand new graphics kind of thing, you know. Like um which I mean it kinda of is a remake, but you ever heard uh, you ever played Tomb Raider, the new ones? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I personally like those games. I probably mm -hmm. like them a lot more than most people. Because like as the games progress, yeah, they got a little muddled, but like I think they're great. Uh, but I don't know if that's because I didn't play the old ones. You know, yeah. so like I'm happy you're here because I don't really know what the old stuff was like. You know, compared the dynamics of those games have changed over the years because the dynamics of gaming has changed over the years. I yeah. Feel like. mm. Um, instead of having it like the old school kind of like, I remember playing uh, Tomb Raider on RE1. Or I mean, not RE1. Oh, what am I saying? On uh, the PC, like a long, long oh. fucking time ago. Um, my dad had a computer that could play it, and he was all about it. Um, so I played it, and it was, like, super cool. You're running through caves, you know, or a big mansion, and you're running through caves, and you got tigers, like, trying to get you in shit, and it's pretty cool. But now you got, like, it's almost like compared to now, it's like Assassin's Creed. You're, like, scouring walls and all yeah. kind of crazy mm -hmm. action. And, and, of course, that the, they do that because it's – it's what can be done, you know? Mm. Um, and Back the in the day, rendering an action scene wasn't a thing you could do. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, triangle intense. boobies. So, I mean... <laughs> yeah, triangle boobies. Yeah, then the, the people so, tried to do mods and shit to get it off, and they would get blown up. You ever see that video? No, of, uh, people, oh, people, there was a... I don't, I don't know if I'm exactly correct, but there was, like, a cheat code roaming around back when, like, Tomb Raider 2 or 3 was out, and mm -hmm. people were like, oh, this is where we'll move her clothes, and you can see these triangle boobies, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, no way, bro, and they enter it, and then eventually the developers were like intertwined with that. They they knew it was a thing because they saw it was like a Reddit. The, the the code didn't work per se. Yeah. But a bunch of horny teens used it. But <laughs> they they eventually coded it in the game to where if you hit that exact formation of like of that 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 cheat code, you'd blow up and die. <laughs> so they were, they're like, take that, you oh, horny freaks. <laughs> hey man, that was the days like. You guys are spoiled nowadays, man. Back in those days, we had like the the blurry HBO. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that a pixel of a booby? Ooh, that's a pixel yeah, of a booby. It's like blurry. <laughs> I can't tell if that's a nose or a nipple. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it, it's it it's crazy, you know, nowadays how it works. But um, but uh, things that you know, another thing we can segue into is um, what kind of games do we feel need remakes and who. Like, what games do you think the developers and publishers can definitely handle and should make one? And I think this would be a better one for you, for sure. I have a few, but... Well, I want to go I want to go with Kiwi first, because I, I could fucking come out with a goddamn list. All right, Mr. Banana, what you got? Right, Banana, my bad. No, you're good. I did that in the um, beginning. That was my fault. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. Lit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Banana. <laughs> I can always rely on you. <laughs> All right, I'm not, I'm not, I told you this, Cap, I'm not that big of a gamer. Yeah. I, like, I play new games, and I played a couple old games a long time ago, so I don't really remember it, mm -hmm. but I think this isn't really a remake, potentially could be, but for COD to bring back how they used to make games, Ah, oh, I got you. War and 
I think World like that's one of the one of them on my list is World at War. Like I think they think they wholeheartedly like remade World at War. It would be unstoppable. Same with like Modern Warfare 2. Cuz like those are the games of my childhood of like was like, you know, Modern Warfare 2 like toxic lobbies. So that's why I play COD today because that shit doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Like I I went through high school. Like we're okay. <laughs> but but yeah, that, like that that was my childhood was playing those kind of games. And then like I said earlier playing Halo. Which um they I guess technically got a remake if you look at the Master Chief collection that way I think it's a remaster isn't it like they just put new it's paint just on a remaster it. okay yeah. I haven't played it I haven't played it mostly because I'm kind of terrified if I start playing it uh that's where my stream and everything's gonna go for like three years and people are gonna be like bro can you stop <laughs> Listen, the way to go on that the way to go on that 100 percent is get Game Pass for a month get ah uh, yeah I've heard about Pass, that yeah and it's psh, you got every every single goddamn Xbox game you can think about. <laughs> And you can play all the Master Chiefs, uh, the Master Chief Edition too. So, so what? You, what about you, Casper? You got any got any remakes right. in the bag? So, as uh, one of my viewers just say, Pokemon needs a remake, oh. uh, a remaster, not remade. Uh, they need to. Tr they tried to remake it on Let's Go Pikachu, and it wasn't the same. So, if they came out, yes, I think if they came out with a, a red, blue, um, or even red, blue yellow and up to silver maybe if they came up with some of those that would be really good um as you can see behind me i am a berserk fan uh, ah. it's an anime it's an anime that's super gory and super fucked up um they had a game of that on uh dreamcast it was called sword of berserk that game uh by far would be great um playstation one uh there's a game called brave fencer musashi oh dude i would fucking love to see that um <laughs> re1 or not RE, uh i keep going back to re1 metal gear solid one if they could go metal gear solid one and two maybe oh no one two and three if they could bring those games into the graphics of today instead of wasting their time on fucking metal gear solid five bring that into life man that would be great um man there's so many uh the the resident or uh damn it i keep saying resident evil um uh playstation 2 um the there's a game called the bouncer that'd be great uh if they made another uh, uh i know a lot of people uh probably online talk about it but that def jam game uh, oh yeah, yeah. def jam vendetta games and stuff like that if they came out with a newer one of those i mean i'm not a rap music person you know um but it was really those games were really freaking cool um it was like a. it was almost like uh i don't know if you guys ever heard about like juggalo juggalo wrestling back in the day too. oh yeah yeah um those games were really fun it's just because there were so many like different people um that you could do uh play as i mean it the list goes on and on there's it, it, it it's so much like if they came out with uh a, a better version of i don't know if you guys played nintendo 64 um, uh, i did a like, little very yeah, very but, back but yeah a little bit goldeneye is the game every oh yeah knows. But is that's the originator of like every first person shooter we have today well there's a, a version of that game that's pretty much i mean i don't want to say it's the same game but it's pretty much the same game it's called perfect dark mm -hmm. um you need an expansion pack for it to play it and it was about like a spy kind of thing it was a female uh female protagonist um that, that game was really cool um but also like zelda i would love for them to can't come out with like an ocarina of time or even majora's mask in like today's today's graphics man well has nintendo like really actually remade or remastered anything i'm not uh, too hip on nintendo which is you know, i'm gonna get burned yes. at the stake for it but no 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 that's cool like i, mean, I like them i just haven't like played a lot of those games like most people i feel like either grow up with like my genre of like you know the first person shooter halo horror games or they're like hardcore pokemon zelda like and they, every time somebody talks to me about most of those things, I'm like, I have no idea, but like, I, I can imagine if it's the same kind of nostalgia and feel I have for my game. So, Absolutely. but um, yeah, but yeah, I don't like know. They, they came out with uh, they came out with a couple for like a lot of the games from um, actually, so GameCube came out with a lot of remasters. It, it's a lot, I, I'd say the Switch is. Uh, I'm not so partial to the Switch, and I know a lot of my really? friends are about to, or my viewers are about to, to yell at me. Um, especially like Honor Girl and a couple other people. Um, I don't like the Switch because they have like five or six good titles. Okay, like mm. you got Breath of the Wild, you got uh, Animal Crossing, you got uh, Smash Bros. But then every other fucking game for the thing is a port. 
You know, oh, yeah. you got the, the Super Smash, or not Super Smash, you got the, the Mario Brothers U Wii, the game from the Wii that came over to the Switch. There's so <laughs> many ports and, and stuff like that. I just wish they would come out with more core games, and that's the only thing that's holding Nintendo back. And I think that's that's crazy, like to think about because, like overall, like I know you don't like the Switch as far as like the game sport, but like its innovation as a system oh, is crazy. It's bananas! How, it's crazy. How much they could go with it, yeah. Like I remember, um, like I didn't even get into it when it first came out, but I had a friend of mine that had it like a couple months later after it came out. And I'm like, he's like, come over here and play. He props it up. He pops the remote off the side. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> like, this is her, uh, what? Like, <laughs> wait a minute. The screen down and yeah, it's, it's crazy. Turn it sideways and you can play fucking Mario Kart, which is yeah, it's dope, crazy. You know, but and I like, just wish that they would come out with more originals. More for yeah, yeah. Like Breath of the Wild. I I love that game. Animal Crossing. I I play. I don't play it as much as I should, but I really enjoyed Animal Crossing. Um, Pokemon, the new Pokemon, I played the hell out of that because it was like that nostalgia from when I was young, even though they didn't have some of my favorite Pokemon in it. Uh, all that, you know, but it's just, I wish they would do more with it. They would bring it out more. Yeah, that would uh, make sense. I mean, it it seems like it, it like a no-brainer, cause especially since how like innovative and good that console is. And I'm pretty sure like its sales are ridiculous. Like it, it literally absolutely. broke boundaries in every way. So, like, I I've wanted one myself because just based on the simple, like, what, you know, us being PC guys, like, we sit here, we have our monitor, we play. Like, there's no way no one else is going to play. Like, no one's going to prop a seat up and be like, all right, let's do a split screen. Like, I've never really heard yeah, of most right. of those things. <laughs> so, like, so like when it's that kind of thing happens, like, you, I think having a system, which is kind of where the future, I think, is going. We're going to have a system that's, like, community-driven, sit down and play with your friends. Because nowadays, we don't get, like, that couch co-op thing anymore. And then we're gonna yeah. get yeah, That's and then what it should have been yeah. <laughs> uh, do you remember the Dreamcast? I, that was like one of my. I think the Dreamcast was way the way 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 before its time. <laughs> and I think it, it died because it was before its time. My um my dad. That's where I remember him playing. I think Resident Evil. I don't know if it was on there, but I'm yeah, pretty no, sure. Okay. okay, I remember him playing a Resident Evil there uh, because he which. Back in the day, this is also gonna hit on a little nostalgia for you, but back in the day, like ripping CDs was like huge. Oh, so like, it, which I, don't, I mean, don't, don't come arrest me, you know, police, FBI, open up. But yeah, my dad, my dad <laughs> burned probably like 400 games on that system, <laughs> like ridiculous. Yeah, well, me and actually a buddy that just called me. Um, that's what I we had an Xbox, OG Xbox that you could uh take games and burn them onto it and then we had this one disc that played uh nes super nes sega uh all all the games you can think about you just fucking boom play it and then you load it up and you could save movies you could save music all kind of shit um oops sorry um uh, but it, it was one of those things that it was that those days were so glory i don't even have a damn I don't even have a CD burner or a, a CD drive on my computer now. I don't. It's weird that I don't, but I I couldn't watch a DVD if I tried. <laughs> yeah, I can't either. I I think like any sort of like disc tray like it's just gone at this point. Like I don't think I want a I want a floppy disk drive. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Try to burn some floppy disks, bro. I got you. <laughs> yeah, that old organ trails. What's up? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I still have a Fiddler of ripped music. Oh Jesus, that's a lot. So we kind of got like sidetracked with nostalgia, which has happened ninety percent of this, yeah. but it's fine. Um, I figured it's gonna happen. But uh, it would another lead lead to another question here, um, which I think it gets towards close to the end. But the big one um, that I think you know a lot of people, a lot of the fans, uh, our our watchers, viewers, everything on YouTube, really gonna want to know is like how we feel. Are they going to? Which I think they are. I think they're, um, that they're kind of slowing down new IPs. And this can kind of like go into like what you said with the Switch. Like mm -hmm. they're remastering and remaking things for the Switch because they're not making new things. So like that becomes like your resources get devoted to going, I'm going to remake this. I'm going to remaster this. And then people are like, all right, that's great. You know, we got, you know, maybe one day. Well, we got every Pokemon redone, remastered, anything you can imagine. But uh, where's a new one? Like, where's something new we can play? Like, I've played these 13 times. Like, I love it. It's great. But new IPs. And that's, like, where the future is going. I don't know. Uh, after, like, visually being in, you know, gaming for a bit now, I, I see a lot of that. Uh, I see a lot of remake, remaster, which is good. But it is going to bottleneck, like, what gets made new. 
And I want to, I want, what do you think about that? Banana, you want to go first? Uh, nah, you can go first. <laughs> All right. I mean, Banana's just kind of there. <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things where I always, I always think that the remakes are important because, of course, it's for the nostalgia, like you said. Um, it also gives us us a chance to bring, like, my son, for instance. He's he's thirteen, um, and then I have a I have a nephew that is four. I I love playing video games with them. Like, of course, we'll play Fortnite and Minecraft and stuff like that, and have them play that. But um, the the getting like, especially my four four, uh, four year old nephew playing like Tony Hawk and stuff like that, um, and just man. ripping it up. Yeah, like I the old school. Tony Hawk Pro Skater, man. Oh, Dude, the new Tony Hawk Pro Skater that just came out. That game is great. It's oh, amazing. Man. It's actually harder. It's actually harder than it was when we were kids. You know. That's um, um that's a controversial opinion because it's on my bad list. Apparently, oh, apparently, people. I haven't list. played it. I haven't played it personally, but like mm -hmm. I've heard that it wasn't like it. They didn't fix like the clunkiness per se that they should have. Maybe. I actually think that they did because like if you think about it, uh, what I was explaining to my my brother, um, like if you go up to up a ramp right and go to hit a a rail, back in the day you could be like two feet away from that rail and hit that rail and it would be like oh move you over you know but this one you actually have to like be on that rail in order to hit it mm. you, ha you have to fine tune your skills and i think a lot of people were like oh i'm gonna be like i did back in the day of like playing tony hawk 2 or P tony hawk underground where i can kind of fudge it or like make it up you know but i think that they fine-tuned it a lot honestly i um apparently from what i'm hearing is is it's mostly the over snappiness is what people didn't like mm -hmm. like they said that that was what like made it worse because it felt like back then you know you had a little bit more leeway but now you're just snapping to like rails and you're just like like things aren't as smooth i guess per se from that but yeah that's that's weird i mean i guess everybody has their own own uh, mm. own experience with it i guess you say because like i said I, I really enjoyed it i i thought it was really cool Ex I, my favorite part of the whole damn thing was the soundtrack like i literally went through and oh. Yeah. muted all of the songs that weren't on the original soundtrack especially for the first two because they kind of merged the two together oh boy um, that reminds me uh re2 mm -hmm. do yourself a favor when you play it disable the okay. new music oh okay play the old music and I'm, it's yeah, it, so nice it's so nice so that, i don't know if it's like a pre-order thing, be a thing like but dude it, oh. but um you know yeah you can continue what you're saying sorry sorry no you're good you're good we got we got sidetracked again um but I think with the, the future, I think, especially from what's going on, like the, the shooting games and stuff like that, I, I see in the future, I see like a lot of uh, the newer games getting rid of stories. And it makes me really fucking sad. Yeah. Like, you, you, I remember I always play, and I'm, I'm playing it now, but the Call of Duty stories were so good. Modern Warfare, uh, all uh, the, the original Black Ops stories were so good. And I don't know about the new ones now because I haven't really played the the through the whole campaign. And they're they're pretty good, but I feel like they're they're focusing more on the multiplayer aspect of all games um, than they are of the story mode of all games. And oh yeah, that's why I still I still fall back on like my Assassin's Creeds and my um, different different story mode games because I I remember the days of not having not having that multiplayer. And it kind of it kind of makes me sad to think about it, but it kind of makes me excited because it in every every gamer has that idea of we want that Ready Player One, that Ready Player One yeah. aspect of, of the world, you know, where we could all just like kind of lay back in our chairs, put our goggles on, and go fight a war with our buddies, you know, and thirty thousand fucking other people, you know. Um, but I I still am really nostalgic of the the old uh, old story mode games, you know. I think uh, as a whole, which is my opinion on everything, I think that they, um, at least with the Call of Duty, I think it was Black Ops 4, they phased out the story completely. Um, mm -hmm. Which, who knows why. It's probably because of Warzone, but either way. Um, I think they are kind of phasing out in their own little ways, but um, I think we're going to have like a diversity, kind of like I was talking about with the Switch and like consoles that are more multiplayer driven or more like, you know, community driven. So like, yeah. I think we're going to go in the same route of games to where we have like the games that are purely story, no multiplayer. And then like the games that are purely multiplayer. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of campaigns recently, because you brought it up, um, the Modern Warfare campaign, I thought was pretty good. Um, really? Cold War was decent. I think it was too short. 
Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think they're okay. Nothing's going to ever top Modern Warfare 2 in my eyes as far as campaign. Like, you know, I think Modern Warfare 1 and 2, just the, the, the way that they mesh that game so well together and, and cr continue the story mode. Did you play Modern Warfare right. 3? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, man, you got to. It ends the story. It ends really? the story of all three, yeah. Uh, it's a trilogy. I have, cause I, I remember being on the window, falling through the window, and then... Well, I remember the guy that you're basically chasing through all of the Modern Warfares. I remember shooting the dude. But I don't remember if he died. I can't, I can't remember. It was so long ago. Uh, was yeah, like the, 60 days, bro. For spoiler <laughs> alerts, I mean, the game's been out forever. But um, when, yeah, you smash through the window uh, at the top of a skyscraper and you hang him. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. forgot what his damn name was. But, yeah, it ends the story completely there. And the only person alive that's at the end is then, Price. Right? Yeah, that's three. Yeah, then I have played it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, good good storylines. You're never going to really top those. But I think that comes down to more of, like, our nostalgia. Like, I, I think, honestly, like, even if they were to top it, like, 100%, we'd be like, nah, never going to top Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 1. Like, But, I mean, I, I come into games normally with open eyes uh, as far as, like, like the new ones. Um, and that, that's mostly because I stream, you know, make content. So it's a little different there. But um, for the most part, I come in with open eyes because I'm like, ah, you know, I, I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, giving a game, like, a bad chance just because they, it wasn't the old game. So. Yeah, and and that's what I that's what I feel a lot about it too, man. Especially when when you go into uh, a lot of the remakes and remasters, because you got to give them a chance because they're their own, you know, their own slice of pie. Mm. You know, just like RE three. I don't. I hear all the stories of how it's so much different, and and people put it on their bad list. But I still want to experience it because it is a Resident Evil game, and it is something that I want to say that okay i finished that you know oh yeah yeah i was the same way that's why i played it because i was like i had my doubts like i said when they were like nine months later we're ready to go and i was mm -hmm. like oh but i still did it and i mean overall it's worth a play but i don't think um i think it could have been executed so much better mm -hmm. and it's actually uh, man it makes me sad that the dude that just hopped into my stream or in the stream um the uh he he's a kid that i've known since i was like 14 man mm -hmm. so, so a long time and he's been the kid that's been playing games with me ever since you know uh he's like my brother um and i wish he could have been here for a lot of the conversation because we're he he's an old school game head man he's a collector like you are yeah i mean hey any anybody that wants to come in you let me know i mean we run it on my discord for the most part but this is going to be yeah, a thing yeah. on every and every every wednesday from here on out we're going to be doing something new which anybody that cool. you think they can contribute, you know, everybody in your chat, anybody in mine, we're, you know, let me know. DM me, we're good to go. Um, I want to yeah, have everybody in here. A bunch of content. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it, it's just, um, you know, worrying about the future. I, I am a little worried because I feel like they're just going to just, they're just going to beat the remake remaster horse until it can't move. And then we're just going to be sitting there looking for new content and every new little game, which I think actually kind of is happening now, like with um, Among Us and um, like these small indie games like Phasmophobia, things that are made by two to three people um, are just becoming like huge, bigger than triple A's in most most titles. Um, because I it's feel like people are hitting that. They're hitting that that barrier where they're like, you know, this is something new. I would say it's all about influencers, too, because. Oh, yeah. Like mm. Among Us, Among Us has been out was out for six months to a year before it blew up you know and then i think it was i don't know preston plays or fucking uh i don't know who else i don't know my my kids watch a lot of youtubers and a lot of those influencers and stuff like that um but it was one of those guys mr beast or somebody like that that actually played it and then it, it fucking overnight it was like holy shit i got people that literally in my discord they play it every night and oh I, yeah i like the game i like it it's really really fun um, it's just like Phas Phasmophobia. That game, I don't know how long that game was out, but uh, Crazy Ninja Kid, he's a kid that's in my uh, Discord and in the stream. He, it's a real-life buddy that I met in the Army. Um, he's like my brother, too. Um, he was like, hey, bro, I got this game. It's super dope. It's like spooky, you know, go ghost hunting. And I was like, holy shit, this game is fucking bananas. But it's just <laughs> very, very bland. Just, oh, yeah. There's yeah. Nothing, nothing too special for it. The fucking zombies and scary things look like they're out of PlayStation 2, you know? And it just, boom. Everybody's playing it, you know? Yeah, you got, I think it takes a couple things into, into, into play. Like, I think the influencer thing is huge um, because, like, they, like you said, they play something. Everybody's like, ooh, what's this? And then everybody else starts playing it. And, you know, as things grow like that, people share it everywhere. And, but that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But, um, 
which but like i said i think that's just like how things are going because these indie people are going here's an original idea i got like 10 bucks to make it and like time let's try it and it's blowing up and it's really good for the future of gaming because it's going to kind of drown out um those shitty remasters remakes and, and games that are just like pouring billions of dollars into something that an indie guy can make you know with passion and in, in a week like that's what i was gonna say that's what i was gonna say so it, i know this is a weird reference but it's just like nfl and college football you know NFL, those guys are the big EA and all the all the big big game makers. They're playing because they have a fucking paycheck that they get paid no yeah. matter what. Mm -hmm. And those college football guys are just like those indie guys. They are playing a game to fucking make a future for themselves and hopefully get into that next step of being Treyarch or Ray or all that, you know. And and I I I think I would play a quality indie game. And I'm not I'm like I'm, I'm kind of spoiled like you said earlier. I'm kind of spoiled when it comes to graphics and stuff like that. Um, but like, like my boy just said, look at Warframe, look at, uh, Dauntless, look at all the free play games that these indie guys are coming up with and just like pushing out and then they just blow up. And I think, I think that's great. Oh yeah. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. And that's like another one of the conversations I have written down here. So for the future, but, uh, it's like indie versus triple A and that's going to be like a really big conversation, but the, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's great for the future of gaming. I think it's phenomenal, and I think it's going to really kind of bring back the passion of playing stuff with people, you know, and, you know, having those games that feel nice, and you don't need the billions of dollars, like. And that's what I'm hoping, because, like, I was talking to another, like I said, the guy, Crazy Ninja Kid, and I was talking about, uh, oh, man, I got to hurry up and get to Prestige 3 on Modern Warfare, because... And then I, I want to beat Valhalla because Cyberpunk's coming out. And he's like, meh. And I'm like, what, bro? Like, that's like one of the hottest titles of this year. Everybody's super stoked about it. And he's like, bro, they pushed it back so many times that I don't want to get my hopes up, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's those big companies that are like EA and all that shit. Like, I was super stoked. What's the game that was, uh, it was like Destiny, but you could fly around and fucking shoot people. You were like, uh... Shit, I can't remember Titanfall. what that game was called. No, it was, it was like supposed to be like the biggest game of the year. Anthem, you know, and it was a yeah, Anthem, super yeah. flop. You think Boombox for that one? All the way into the fucking <laughs> ground, yeah, Anthem, all the way into the fucking ground, you know. And it was such like such a good looking game and a good game concept, but of course they poured fucking millions of dollars in that game and look what they got. They got fucking shit in their hands, you know. Yeah, it, 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 I think it's it, sad. Uh, like Boombox said, it, it ends up becoming, um, which is another barrier of, of entry, is like the big plat, like the big triple A's don't listen to their fans a whole lot. Like the mm -hmm. indie people are like mm -hmm. developing games side by side, and yeah. it, it ends up becoming one of those things. But you know, the way to look at like to, relative to the to the conversation is like, you know, let's say in ten years, some triple A or big publisher goes, "Hey, you guys made uh, Among Us and blew up for a year." You know, here's a fuck ton of cash. Remake it. You know, let's remaster it. And like, that's when it gets into those weird kind of like purgatory areas where like you don't know if a game's gonna be like that. Because like most people that don't want to develop a lot of these remasters, remakes, because a lot of the people will be like, oh, this is perfect the way it is. You know, like we don't need to touch it. I don't care how clunky mm -hmm. it is. I don't care nothing. Like this is perfect. Um, yeah. If you get into those scenarios. You know, but then the, they, they wave a, you know, ooh, here's $10 million. They're like, uh, well, all right. <laughs> and then they'll do it. And that just kind of, you know, kind of waters I down the gaming. If they, if they, especially with like Among Us or anything like that, or games that people are hardcore playing right now, because my, my kids, my 10 and 13 year old, they play Among Us. And it's really cool because they'll sit next to each other on their phones and like, hey, this guy killed me just now. Go, go vote him off, you know. And it's just <laughs> like that that interaction that they have, you know, that they're gonna remember. And when they're when they're 22 or 23 years old, sitting at a computer doing some shit like we're doing right now, and they come out with Among Us 3D, you know, it, which everybody's already creating, but they come out with like the same Among Us. It's gonna be the same thing we're gonna feel like back in the day when I played Mario or like when I sat there and played Contra with my buddy. Uh, or my, my cousins and shit, or when me and Gatsu used to play, like, the Dreamcast, they started coming out with that shit. It would be, like, the same feel. So, like, even, uh, unless they, like you said, when they flashed that $10 million in front of them, unless they, like, completely changed everything, 
if they came out with a remaster of that, I think it would be great. It would be great for the future of that game, you know. But I guess it depends on who we're talking about, because they, because like it, the the developer themselves can completely botch it, just make it a quick little thing and throw it out, which is why we get a lot of bad remasters, I think, today, and bad remakes yeah, like Resident Evil Three. Money in their pocket, you know, because they don't give a shit. They're getting their ten million dollars, and then they could dump three into it, and then okay, they're walking. Oh away yeah, yeah, that's what George Lucas does did with with Star Wars. <laughs> Disney, well, for the most part, but Disney was like, here's a bunch of cash. And he's like, yeah, I don't want to make any movies. And they're like, well, how about double that? And he's like, all right, <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> the, the general consensus of, of the, the newer Star Wars movie that they came out can be summed up in the, the well, it's technically the sixth movie, but the third one at the very end when he's like, what happened to Padme? And he's like, you killed her. And he's like, no, in the robot voice. And he starts like walking away. That's like all I can think about in Star Wars. Because <laughs> those last three movies were just... Something else. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I know that you know, which kind of ties into the conversation that like your your nostalgia is heavy with Star Wars. Cause I know like forty years of lore is dead. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know I know Star Wars for you was like your epic crazy movie back then. See, no, but I wasn't a Star Wars guy. I wasn't really. Um, I was a Lord of the Rings guy. Okay, I, I would say hands down, I would watch. I would watch. The movie of two midgets running across the field <laughs> to, throw, to throw a uh, yo, what up, chief? Um, oh shit, I was oh, I uh, whoa, I'm getting raided right now. I'm sorry, <laughs> hey, you're good. We're What's up, everybody? <laughs> We're having a conversation right now about uh, old school video games. Actually, a lot of the people Fujiwara, uh, Fujiwara, uh, he's gonna be a guy that would be great to uh, pull into something like oh. that. Um, but yeah. Because he's 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 the old school video game guy. He he's he's that Toe Jam and Earl perfect fucking perfect uh, perfect runs kind of guy. You know. Um, Let's pull him in here. Holy shit! Yeah. Well, I don't I don't know if he's I don't oh, know what okay. he's doing right now because when he's <laughs> at home he doesn't have the best internet. But he oh, streams on the weekends. So, um, but L Lord of the Rings for me it had more it had more meat and potatoes. It was like it was like playing those older games that the quality story mode. Uh, storyline and then like star wars had that and for what they were doing at the time it was great uh but with with the animations but like i said they ruined it in the last three um it i mean but when they did the hobbit they continued to keep being awesome you know um but it, it's it's just like video games man you just fucking it it takes one moment to ruin like you said resident evil 3 for you i bet you that when you if you would have played that game when you were younger it would have been great it took one remaster of it, and then it's just in the trash can for you. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, well, so, it's, see, that, that can kind of tie in because, like, um, it. At the end of the day, like another conversation in this kind of like bracket is like, do we, because of our nostalgia, just write shit off, like because it will never be like it, which is unfair. Like, do you think that happens? Do you think oh, that happens absolutely. a lot? Absolutely, and and that's probably one of the main reasons why I haven't played Resident Evil Three yet. Because, like I said, I got a Resident Evil tattoo, you know, but I have not touched those games or that game in particular because of the fact that I've heard so much uh, sucky stuff about it, you know? Um, it's just like if, uh, but also it's going to be the thing, Cows for Life 69, thank you for the follow. Uh, it's just like Onimusha, though. Uh, when they came out with that remaster, or uh, yeah, the remaster of it, I hopped on it right away. I, I played it, I think. Yeah, I played it on my Switch actually, but mm. I hopped on that remaster right away, and it was it was I the best amount of money that I could have spent on a remastered game because it was my childhood, you know. Well, um, said, yeah, the Hobbit movies were pretty mad compared to the original movies. They were, but it's hard to come up from what you had originally, you know. Mister Banana, you, you're you're staying quiet over there. You you're being yeah, the guy in the back of the man. class that just shouts out like, "Yeah, fuck you." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so i want to give you a chance uh which you said you don't know much about like the older stuff per se but um which i i think yeah go ahead um do you um do you think that uh remakes and stuff are getting in the way of new ips from your standpoint like when they when when a developer makes you know like re2 and re3 remakes do you think that gets in the way of which we don't know internally as far as developers and stuff but do you think it gets in the way of making a new title that can be double as good compared to a remake what's up vince i'll go to the stream yes 
Yeah? I mean, it definitely could. I see you. I'm just talking to them. Sorry. I love you. Yeah, it definitely could. Yeah? Because, you know, it's just, it's like a lot to try and remake something and make the community happy because there's a lot of people with different opinions on mm -hmm. what's good and what's bad about the Absolutely, original game dude. and it's and it's it's not easy to make everyone happy it's actually yeah impossible. it's never gonna so, happen <laughs> yeah. never gonna happen so but i think it may be better to just move on really from old games and just just let it sit in the past and have the nostalgia and whatever hmm. okay so you're taking the high road then <laughs> yeah. you're going now fuck all that <laughs> which i mean from from like I, I guess a lot of games i can live without like remakes or remasters but like resident evil 2 like i said was like hands down like that best game of the year in my opinion so like, yeah. if that was not pursued, I don't know. Well, obviously, I wouldn't know because it wouldn't exist. But, like, at the end of the day, like, I don't know, like, what it would be, like, the gaming style. Like, I don't know if they would have made Resident Evil 8, like, right away, and it was ten times better kind of thing, you know? So it really depends. But, I mean, the way that I look at it, um, it's kind of simple. It's like, you, uh, and, it, and it's what kind of is happening now um, because a lot of people are running out of original ideas. That's why remakes and remasters are so big. Because they're going, you know, our golden days of Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, and 4. Like, what are we going to do now? Like, we can't beat those. They're like, all right, let's remake them. Because they're running out of ideas. And, you know, that I think that it's scary for some developers, but it, it's working for the most part. <laughs> See, but I, I also feel like they, they do a lot of this stuff, and they just keep coming up with, like like, blank ideas, you know? And then, for instance, like I said, they come out with a Resident Evil 7. And it's just like, for me, I didn't care for Resident Evil 7 because it was the first person view. It was like, a, it was basically designed for VR. Uh, and they, they thought that that VR was going to, uh, and VR is picking up a lot, but it's not as going as fast as everybody thought it would. Uh, so they wanted to come out with that game. And it's it, it just, and, and this is something that my boy, my boy Gatsu talks about all the time, the bread and butter. Bread and butter of video games. If they would just stick with that and come out with quality content, Cause I like like for instance I don't know have you guys played the Crash new Crash Bandicoot or the uh, Spyro games? Have you guys I played, uh, played them when I was younger, uh, and I've mm -hmm. seen both of them played through. I haven't personally played them. No. Have you? But the have you messed with the new ones at all? No, that's what I'm saying. I haven't really played the new ones. Uh, okay. I, I played the well, older ones. I remember playing Crash when I was young. Well, I pl I played the new ones that came out, and they they seem like they're still quality games. They're not gonna live up to the hype of when we were young kids, you know, because it was like a magical magical thing. But they're still quality games. If but it, they stuck with their bread and butter, you know, and just came out with a new version of their their old stuff, you know. Of course, with the upgraded graphics and stuff. Okay. So before we uh, we get close to ending this off here, I want to kind of open it up to everybody viewing. I want to hear everybody else's opinions. So, because this will be part of that, the end of everything we do here. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're doing this to add a little bit of value. Uh, obviously, some entertainment. But I wanted to um, pursue this, um, which I think I might have put in the messages to you and, and other people. I, I want to kind of pursue this to be a thing that um, diverts my content a little bit and provides value. Because I feel like talking, a lot of the times nowadays, like, we get, like, very narrow perspectives like we'll watch somebody with 1 million views on YouTube about why Call of Duty Cold War sucks ass and then we'll go with that most of the time but with situations like this I'm pulling in everybody that wants to be here which might get hectic at the end of the day but this is how conversation should be so that's kind of why I'm pursuing it is, is to kind of give a little bit of entertainment um, but also give some context and um, from the people that it really matters um, the people that play, the people that make content, which is some of the Coptics we'll go into later on. But, but yeah, but also at the end of that, um, before we, we end off my last question, um, I want to ask people in chat. I want to ask them what they think. I want to see um, overall um, if this is a good conversation to have and just overall opinions. I think uh, so I'll open my chat up and I assume you do the same. Yeah. And we can kind of read off some things. My boy Ch uh, Chef, he said that he thinks that uh, the remakes are just safe, and I, yeah, mean, I, can, yeah. I can understand that. I mean, you yeah. have something that made a lot of money back then, 
um, and you remaster it and then re rethrow it out. It's like throwing out the same plate of food, you know, that they liked before. Just yeah. it gets eaten up, you know, and then that, yeah. that makes them tons of money. And it could it could be something that could uh, hopefully it. What would be really smart for the companies to do is use those remasters and those remakes if it ended up good to turn around and make better content later down the road, you know? Like, if I sell a million copies of fucking Rainbow Six Siege again, you know, come out the next Rainbow Six is going to be that much better because it's the nostalgia, you know? Yeah, definitely. Does anybody else in the in the chat have any ideas or want to comment on, like, the good, bad, and the ugly of uh, remakes, remasters, and the the future of video games? I know I got a lot of uh, Smash players in here that got a lot of opinions from uh, 64 to GameCube to uh, Switch. You know. <laughs> yeah, I got I got a lot of Zoomers. You got a lot of a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of Boomers. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Wait, the people that I mean, well, I got a couple people that are like my age range, but a lot of the people that watch me are are kind of younger. Oh, okay. It sucks being the old man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, I'm older than most of my viewers. Yeah. But yeah, anybody, uh, my chat, your chat, anybody got anything to add before we end it off? Which, I mean, this is the first episode. I don't expect everybody to have something to say, but yeah. I will throw it out there because it's going to be part of the, the, the formula going forward. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, my uh, my uh, bot just said that if you're enjoying your content, uh, you can smash that follow button. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good opinion. Yeah, that adds, adds a lot. Adds yeah. a lot. <laughs> Uh, so King Vincent says uh, in my chat, he says it spoils us. Hmm. What What do you mean by that, Vince? You just mean like it gives us too much too quick? Where it's like, oh, yeah, if the next game's not better than this. I mean, I can see how it kind of ramps up. So you're like, oh, that was great. You know, remaster was great. You know, what are they going to do next? And it it kind of makes you um, I don't, like not humble, I guess you could say. Whatever the word is where you're not, you know, you're just not you, the next game that comes out. You're not going to meet that expectations. Is that what you mean by that? What about you, Banana? You got anything to add? Oh, we got Sergeant Noob in chat. That's the man I was looking for. Uh, I like the re this man. He's the, he's the he's the man. Oh yeah, yeah. He plays all the old games, man, which I commend. I can't, I couldn't do it, but like he does it, dude. He he kicks ass in it. But uh, he said, I like the remaster, especially when it comes to much older games or games that could really use a facelift. Okay. So in your, your aspect, you think that games that, you know, are not necessarily that old just aren't really worth that? You think they're really like cash grabs at that point? Like, I guess a good example would be like a Dark Souls 1 remaster, which they did. Like, would yeah, that can be considered? I wouldn't say that that's a cash grab, though. I would, I would more say, though, like, because that is a cult following. Yeah. Those Dark Souls, those Dark Souls, because you have to be a specific type of fucking individual that I will never understand. Get good scrub. Enjoy those games. Just Get wrecked, noob. Masochist. I'm one of those. Yeah, masochist. I'm one of those yeah. people. <laughs> and, I love Dark Souls. I am. I am not a timing guy. I have. I have Gatsu. I have Kai. Welcome. I have. Uh, I have uh, uh, lots of friends. Crazy Ninja really Kid. Good. Thank you for the follow, Sekiro, man. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the family. Hope yeah. you're enjoying but this honestly, conversation. See, he says his Dark Souls are so fun, much love. But those, it's like the cult classic followings. That's the ones that, when you do a remaster of it, of course it's gonna get sold. That's a no-brainer, because of course you have uh, something that's shinier and, and newer, and of course you're gonna want it. You're gonna want to have it, especially when the original games were great. Yeah, they don't true. need to do another re like if they would have done a, a remake of Dark Souls one, oh that would have fucking ruined the franchise. That would have it would have sunk. Everything, oh yeah, uh, everything that they worked on. But I also feel like they did it they did it intelligently because I don't think like the bottom of my heart being a Dark Souls fan, I don't think there's any way to really please us. <laughs> like we yeah, enjoy yeah. we enjoy dying in games thirty times, <laughs> so I don't really think there's gonna be a way we're gonna like make us happy. <laughs> <laughs> Aria, thank you so much for the uh, for the raid, and I hope you get good sleep. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Uh, remakes. <laughs> this is from more Sergeant Noob. Uh, remakes. I feel are cash grab, but remasters where the game is the same but better graphics, especially for those who are diehard fans wanting it. Yeah, like in Star Absolutely, Wars Battlefront yeah. Two remake was made the way it should have been, kind of like the mod they used for the original, just updated the graphics. Okay. 
See, there's a guy that in uh, Chef in my in my thing goes back to what I was talking about earlier about the Switch and why I don't like it. He said, I think that Nintendo is the worst at remastering games because they just straight out effortlessly port the games over. And that's what I said. The Switch is a port system. It's 100%. Okay, baby, thank you. Um, they just effortlessly... Why don't you say, talk okay. to me like that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she said food, so I got to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can oh, understand. Uh, I understand. And then, so, so I... That's that's the thing, man. It's just they they throw like the Super Smash Bros or all that shit. They just here you go. Here's the same shit that was on the Wii U. I'm gonna toss it in the Switch and like fine tune a little bit of stuff and make it make it the same thing. Gotcha. So, what about you, Banana? You got anything to add? Call those system uh, sellers to an extent. Extent. Noob definitely has a point. Uh, at the end of the day, a remaster is nearly safe bet for bringing in revenue. Will it make everyone happy? Uh, probably not, but money is money. A remake is a risk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's overall pretty good, you know, like overall basis on it. Yeah. Got to, got to hit the nail on the head too, especially with the PS5. Okay. Number one game that, or the first game that comes out on PS5, Spider-Man and Demon Souls. Okay. It's a remaster. But he called it, he said, we call those system sellers. Honestly, the PS5 is going to be hype as fuck. But think about all those people is just fucking chomping at the bit to play Demon Souls, the game that started it all, the, the whole whole line of masochism, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it started it all. They just, uh, they just remade that, didn't they? I got to get my now, hands on, on that PS5, game. That, that's I got to get my and hands on that game. You, you, everybody want, is chomping at the bit to get that. And you can only get it on the PS5, you know? It's just, yeah. Comes oh, that's in. a... Oh, you hoo -hoo, get ready for that one. Because uh, exclusives really really tickle my jimmies. <laughs> I can't stand yeah. <laughs> exclusives. Well, th of course they have to do it, man. They got to do it. Because us as Master Race people, um, it's going to be hard for us. Because there's no Xbox exclusives that's not going to be on PC. Mm -hmm. But when you got the PlayStation, I mean... Yeah, like, I want to play Spider-Man. I fucking love the Spider-Man that was on PS4. I've been playing Spider-Man since PS1 days, you know? Mm -hmm. And actually, Super Super Nintendo with Spider-Man and uh, Spider-Man and the X-Men game. That, that game was the shit. But uh, I really want to play that. And that's what's really pushing me to get a PS5. Because I got a PS4 sitting over there I don't fucking touch. <laughs> yeah, I uh, recently, uh, to kind of tail on that, I just had uh, my buddy of mine, because he has a PlayStation 5, uh, or four. Uh, I just got him into PC, which he kind of plays the whole time now. Mm -hmm. But um, he, before that, be. yeah, he had he had a PlayStation Four, and I talked to him to get The Last of Us Two. So I really like that game. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's kind oh, of that it's game, a situation like that. See, and that's that's one of those things where uh, The Last of Us Two. How did you feel about that game? <sighs> um. Hmm. And it was the, the re I haven't really like correlated like a sequel. full opinion, but I will say um, beautiful game, obviously, um, yeah. as far as visually. Uh, most of the game, pretty good. Um, but I feel like most... Did you play it? Have you played it? I have not, but I played the okay. shit out of uh, The Last of Us 1. Uh, it's going to break your heart uh, in its own way. Because uh, it, it... It's just like the beginning of The Last of Us 1 did. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, which is good in its own right. But uh, a lot of people's critique on, like, Last of Us 2 is, like, they just, like, pound the wall. They, like, pound the wall with, like, this sucks, you suck, life sucks, go die. Like, it's, like, which is, it's good in its own portions. But, I mean, the world itself, I get it as a post-apocalyptic world and all that. But there's some, like, you don't need to just pound it that hard. And a lot of the end of the game is just pointless. Yeah. Like, they could have ended that game, like, that. three hours before the ending, and people would have been like, yeah, that's cool. I'm down with that. But, <laughs> that's, it, see, they, but that's good to hear an honest opinion of somebody that, that really enjoyed the game, and you got somebody else oh, in the dude, gaming. Oh, dude, Last of Us game, 1, you know? yeah, Last of Us 1 had me in tears. 90% of the time, I loved that game. And, okay. you know, coming into Last of Us 2, I had high expectations, which might have been part of why some of it was kind of rough. But uh, but yeah, overall, uh, good game visually, um, and I think it's worth a play. But it's gonna piss off a lot of people, and it did. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Gatsu or no? So Ch uh, Chef says 3D All Stars is really bad with that. Okay. Um, and then Gatsu said, "Bro, look, uh, look, bro, look at something like Sleeping Dogs. Great game, remaster on PS4, and it was good as as good as it was on PS3. Yeah, I I really like Sleeping Dogs." That Yakuza style like beat 'em up game. Um, then Chef said it's all just ports with uh, SM64. 
uh, being updated and removed. Yeah. So basically, the, a lot of the port you're talking about all the ports from the the Switch. Uh, not a lot of people did. Did not. Yeah, did not play it. One thing that absolutely hated was how one of the first games they brought to PS5 was GTA 5. No fucking way. That's oh yeah, uh, that sucks, They're dude. Really milking the... Dude, now. that fucking game came out on three. I remember dude, day yeah. one. You know what that reminds me of? Like, have you um, you know Skyrim, right? Obviously, I assume. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like a little off topic, but it supplies great value. So uh, I don't know if anybody knows. I think his name's Todd Howard. Is the guy that is the owner of uh, Bethesda. Yeah. He yeah. he rebundled Skyrim again. And sold it to the Xbox Pass again, <laughs> man. Like, which I'm is like sure Skyrim's still like fifty bucks on fucking. Steam. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Which I mean is worth it, but like this is kind of this is something we should have probably talked about earlier. Game. Yeah, we should have talked about it earlier, but this is a bad scenario where they're not mm -hmm. making new shit. They're just throwing Skyrim back at our face, and yeah. just over and over and over. And and. That motherfucker keeps doing it too. <laughs> we keep eating it up. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, but we keep fucking buying it. You know, it's it's one of those things that I always say. You won't have three hundred dollar or six hundred, nine hundred dollar fucking gaming systems if nobody buys them. You know, yeah. you won't have a sixty dollar fucking fifteen year old game if people don't keep buying them. You know, it's like that. Like you said, it it's a fucking same old game with new, brand new fucking silky red bow. Yeah. And then there you go. Oh, well, meltdown! Thank you so much for the. Tier one sub for seven months. All right, I'll read one We're more out of my. Games. Read one more out of this, and I ask you guys one more question, and then we kind of wrap this up. Um, right. gonna run a, run a little too late for the YouTube, but it's okay. My it's bad. okay. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, I don't want to cut oh, off conversation. You know, if we can supply <laughs> stuff to it. Oh. Hello. There's a little kid. Oh Jesus, <laughs> oh, Gary. <laughs> She's cute. What do you think about remakes? <laughs> you don't know. Okay, well, Good you can't you can't supply anything to the conversation. I like Animal Crossing. So you're just here for looks? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Bullseye said uh, they're coming out with Red Dead Online and selling it as a separate game. And if they're doing Red Dead, they are probably going to do it with GTA. Yeah. They're going to keep doing that, Red honestly. They're going to do it until people are like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> like, we're good. <laughs> Which I don't know how long that will be. Honestly. It, shh, I don't know how long that's going to be until people stop doing that kind of thing. But um, yeah. ultimately, uh, before we wrap this up... Um, my, I think I kind of asked it, but we haven't really got a full consensus on it. Uh, just in a short response, Banana, Casper, what, uh, good or bad, do you think in the future as far as remakes? Do you think they're going to hurt the industry? They're going to help? I think, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to help it, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, just because, I mean, yes, like you said, it's, and a lot of people said it's beating a dead horse sometimes with certain games, but there is, there is that niche that's just sitting there, that fucking gold mine that they just need to tap into and the hardcore gamers or just anybody is going to love it. Because a lot of the old school games, man, everybody would love if they had an opportunity to play it without shitty graphics, you know? And if they would just remaster some of the PlayStation games or PS2 games and just say, okay, here, here's a... It's going to be new to some and old to some and nostalgic to some, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. I, think it, I think it's going to be great. All right, Banana, what about you? What you got? I agree with Casper. You agree? Okay. And I think... Oh, my phone. Hold on. So unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a, a billion-dollar podcast that you just well, ruined. We might, we might get a million, <laughs> million views on YouTube. Jesus. Oh, yeah, for sure. Not now. We're done now. <laughs> The film industry is also having the remake issue too, is what Chef says. Uh, but um, I guess what what do you got, Banana? You got anything? Oh yeah, it, I think it definitely can support future games. Like if they make a remake and it does well, and it can support a new game, either financially or through story or whatever, and also remakes are I don't know like I think they're all right but remasters I definitely like 
I'm fine with remasters, but remasters. Uh, are you gonna game some? I'm not sure, Vincent. We'll see. I'm not feeling too hot, so I might get off for a little bit tonight. They, ha they really have to pay attention to the community, and if they don't, it kind of goes to shit. Yeah, Absolutely. I got you. So you're about where I am as far as my consensus on everything. I think, uh, I think done correctly, great idea. Um, but I think it's very touchy. I think they can they can really ruin uh, the like the the feel of a good game um, that didn't really need it. Like like I'm scared of Resident Evil Four being remaked because that's in the works right now. Um, allegedly, I don't know fully, but everybody's saying it is. But um, I am terrified that that game is going to be horrible because I don't know. I'm going to go into it with open eyes and I'm going to play the hell out of it on stream, but I don't know if I'm worried about it. You know, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty iffy on it. So I'm kind of taking the mid road here on the whole, the whole scenario. I think, um, I think overall uh, it could be good, but I think there's going to be bad apples that just make people not want to play any other ones. And it's going to make people worried about the overall like idea of a remake and a remaster in like five years, 10 years. So, but, uh, I agree. other than that, um anybody got anything they want to shout out before we we end this off here but Anna, i know you're streaming i know casper you're streaming so anybody on youtube i mean <laughs> he said uh, gatsu just said do you have any room in chat so next time next time we i got this, you yeah yeah, yeah. To, we're gonna have to pull him in because he he's a he's a smart dude especially when it comes to everything like old school gaming mm -hmm. anything from gaming to wrestling all that shit he's he's a pretty much like all-around guru of stuff gotcha Casper, you, you, you want to shout your your stream out, or anything just, like that? I just want to thank everybody for stopping in, the raids and all that stuff, dude. Yeah, that's pretty wanna, dope. Especially, want to thank you too, man, for giving me the opportunity to actually come in here. Oh no this doubt, is the man, first I love actual it. Actual YouTube video that I'm ever gonna be in in my life. Oh, so. oh. yeah. It's well, dope. I mean, I I love it every bit of it. I wanted to, like I said, supply a little bit of you know education, a little bit of content. So this is an idea yeah. I had, and you you fit right in. So Hell I yeah, love it. Thanks, man. <laughs> Banana, anything, uh, anything from Jesus, you? He made me change my hat right now while I'm fucking streaming. Damn it! <laughs> You're my good. hair's all fucking crazy. Oh, perfect old school gaming hat. Boop. There you go. Damn, you missed an opportunity. That could have been right in the start. Yeah, well, I had to rock my Casper. Welcome. Hat. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a thing. That's a point re fucking redeem thing that he uh, he can do. So. Uh. Well, uh, to end it off on my side, anybody interested from Casper, uh, Banana, any anybody relative that wants to be part of this conversation, this is going to be a, a new thing every Wednesday, um, which I, I'm going to contact Casper every time. He's going to be part of this if I can get him in there. But, um, oh, yeah, man. I appreciate that. Uh, anybody that wants to be part of this, um, my Twitch channel has a Discord uh, link, or I can put it in my Twitch chat, whoever's here. Uh, either way, uh, anybody that wants to be part of these conversations, uh, 5, pre 5 p.m. CT uh, every Wednesday, I'm going to start doing this. Uh, pretty consecutively um it's going to be every week basis um this is something i want to do as a whole but uh, anybody that wants to be part of that uh, I, uh twitch tv game captain ttv anybody over there on casper i think most of your people already followed uh which i yeah, will I gave you a, i gave you a shout out for sure oh, and then yeah. i also linked my discord too in my chat for mm -hmm. all the people that came in through raids and stuff like that if you guys want to come hang out and yeah then yeah definitely either way we can we can try to work it out where i get you get them over to you and we can oh yeah we'll move around for sure i don't want to be the guys just like everybody come to my discord and my twitch no, no we'll, we'll, we'll move that's around. the thing man you're 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 the fucking you're the captain of the boat right now you know you came up with the ideas so and it was a hell of an idea too so uh, ironically uh this whole kind of thing happened because i i wanted to like change up content a little bit and mm -hmm. um just for a future reference, because in like 10 years, I'll probably watch this video and be like, whoa. Uh, <laughs> I went like without sleep and like eating for like three days because I wanted to like put myself in a situation where I just thought of new content and this is what I got. So. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you got to keep, keep a notepad right next to your bed. Right oh, I do. I got I got a notepad just right here on my table. I just got, that's got everything I have on it. I have the fucking craziest ideas right before I go to sleep. Oh, yeah. I yeah. remember any of them. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, overall, I appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, I'm going to say sure, thank man. you to everybody in chat. Talk a little bit here before I end off, but I'm going to leave a Discord and call. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up uh, hopping out, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to grab some food, and I'm probably going to play some Call of Duty in a little bit. So. Well, they might shoot you a raid based on who's in my, my, my thing. Which plan? Absolutely. Playing, playing Cloud? Uh, we, uh, yeah, we're going to be playing Cold War, but we're okay. going to be playing... I don't know if my boy if my boy is still in there. Yeah, I play... Well, oh, shit. This is not good. Oops, my bad. So I play with my father-in-law and my... Uh, and my buddy, uh, Crazy Ninja Kids. So we'll see if they're still in there playing. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I'll probably raid you depending on that that time frame. And then uh, other than that, um, yeah, I appreciate it, man. That was dope. I really appreciate it. You're good at conversations. Cool, I yeah. love it. <laughs> I and talk I to will, myself um, sometimes, but... <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going to be updating Discord uh, like the day before, maybe a little earlier every Wednesday on the like, topic and bringing people in, things like that. DM personal people like you and you know stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be putting it up. So if anybody's interested in that kind of kind of uh, joining in on those conversations, I got I got like 13, 14 different topics and it's only going to grow. So if you want to come oh, in yeah, there, that, suggest dude, something this too. Is, this is something I'm telling you. It's going to fucking, it's going to be good. And the more people we get into it. here, it's going to be fucking, it's going to be better. I think overall, I think the industry needs a little bit of a conversation amongst a lot of people instead of just one-sided things. So I think this Absolutely. will help a lot. But uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it off. I appreciate it. Uh, much All love, right. everybody. Thank I will you see you around, see Banana. You I'll see you in a little bit, Casper. All right. Later.